gladly. Violence, pestilence, heartache, and death, none of those should separate us from your love, and we know it, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just, let's just raise a hand. We're going to get all funky up in here, man. Let's just, let's just, let's just raise those holy hands. Come on, y'all. Let's just thank him. Some of you haven't talked to him today. Let's just bless his name this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We'll get to it in a minute, but this is important. This is important. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Thank you for watching my family. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for taking care of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to you. Are y'all ready? We're ready. I want to dedicate this first song to the survivors. And as soon as we get going, you'll understand. Now listen, if you don't jump to your feet, clap, scream, shout, stomp, do all those things that you do, if you don't do any of those things, I'm going to be highly offended. <laughs> now, I'm a Pentecostal preacher. You can't do nothing that's going to surprise me. I've seen it all. <laughs> Also play one of the hottest rock and roll bands that ever come out of the Southeast. <laughs> Nothing will surprise me. <laughs> the big joke is, what do you get when, when three Pentecostal preachers and a rabbi show up in a bar? Yeah, big Papa and the Shuffle Brother. <laughs> that's, that's the band I work for. Yeah. We play, we're, we're a commercial band. We play festivals and resorts all over the coast, and, and that, that's what they do, and, uh, but we see it all, but you know, I've seen God minister in every situation, uh, I've, we've probably won over 100 people this year to the Lord in the and it's, it's just, this is great, it is just great, we met a guy in the movie, good taste, most of you know who Phil Adams is, my, my, my business partner in the band, and uh, we were playing yesterday at the fairgrounds in Tallahassee. And uh, it was a Christian Arts Festival. The Lewises were there. I think it's great to see them this morning. They're good friends. And um, anyway, this guy comes up to the stage after we finish playing. We're tearing down. And, and uh, he goes up to Phil and he says, hey, man, do you know me? And I, I recognize you from someplace. And what happened was three years ago, we were playing, and uh, or, or Phil was playing, so, and, he, and he ministered to this guy. This guy was a crackhead. I mean, he was wasted. He was, I mean, he was as thin as a pencil. And yesterday, this guy was big and brawny. He has family with him. He owns his own business. He led him to the Lord a couple of years ago. Wow. And he was changed. Awesome. He got delivered, set free. Now he's living a life of Christ. Yes! <laughs> Because Phil was half crying and I was half crying. And when he, he was telling me, I was like, oh, this is so cool. But anyway, the, the bottom line is, you can't have those on. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Turn those things off. The bottom line is, he was lost, but now he's found. Yes. What he was, he ain't no more. Amen. And what he's going to be, he's headed to. And that's all of us today, isn't it? Amen. Amen. You guys ready to worship the Lord? Yes, sir.
Come on, y'all. Let's worship. She'd say what 
she she'd get up and talk for a minute, tell like what was going on and how God was moving and what he was doing. And she she always end up, man, if you can't praise him, you don't know him. You just don't know him because he's good. Yes. Christian artist. 
artist, and I rewrote. And I see the set of the lyrics that I was proposing, and, and uh, this woman's going, "Yeah, we looked at it and we like it." And she goes, "Oh, wait a minute, Robin's right here. Why don't you talk to him?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so and the woman I was talking to was his wife. <laughs>
are, it's just really hot. Listen, I got a word for you today. Think you're ready to
is people who are stepping out from under the covering of God's protection. It's the physics of separation from God. Did you catch that? Yeah, I got it. I got it. It's like when I was a kid, you're going to find this hard to believe, but I had a big mouth. to antagonize the crap out of the, the, the local neighborhood bully. Man, I would rag him. And I, was, I was just a little skinny kid. And my brother was a fullback in the high school football team. And so I knew when my brother was close, I, I'd rag this guy. I'd get him all tanked out, buddy. Because I knew as soon as this kid was ready to kill me, my brother would step in and clean this block. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it worked on several occasions, except that last occasion. <laughs> I, was, I was doing my best to antagonize this guy. He was about as red as you could get. <laughs> I his face. I, I knew he wanted to kill me. <laughs> and I was just laughing because I knew my brother would sit right there and uh, in, in our driveway. I was, I was behind our house and I knew he was right there. And uh, so uh, I just dragged this guy, dragged this guy. And finally, when it was on, it was on. <laughs> and my salvation was no words. <laughs> He got distracted by this thing called girl. <laughs> Evidently, girl is more important than little brother getting pulverized in the backyard. <laughs> so, but that's what happens. That's what's happening. When we step out from the covering of God, well, we're, leaving, we're leaving our protection behind. And you're going to get pulverized every time. Dude, Jesus is not a crutch. He's an iron lung. He's a life support system. Without him, you're going to die. That's right. You got your Bibles? Yep. Turn over to uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 28. I think that's a good one. Now, this is, this is scripture we usually use when we're doing communion. But the, the, the crux of, the, of, of it, it says, so let every man examine himself. It's talking about taking communion. Not, and then the next verse goes on about taking communion unworthily. But, but when Paul said, he said, let, so let every man examine himself. He wasn't talking in the negative. He was talking in the positive. He was saying, you need to look at yourself and see that you're worthy to take the Lord's Supper. See, when you're born again, you're not like you were. That's right. You're not a sinner anymore. That's right. It says, all things are passed away. Behold, you've become new. Amen. Now, when I got saved, I looked in the mirror the next morning and I still had to shave. And I still have to shave. Yeah, and I hate shaving. I hate, it's right up there with cutting the grass. <laughs> it's almost as bad as cutting my hair. <laughs> you people laugh.
They took him to a place and they lured a lion off of, of a protected um, what do you ever call it? Reserve. Reserve, right. A game reserve. Preserve. Is it preserve or reserve? Preserve. They lured this lion off that preserve and he could, and that's what happens when you when you start talking negative out of your mouth. When you start letting trash come out of your mouth. Whether it's on Facebook or if it's audio, it doesn't matter. It's coming out of your mouth. That's right. When you allow that to happen, what you're doing is you're allowing somebody to take you on an illegal safari. And you're going to get caught up in the world just like this poor guy. Right. Put a guard on your mouth. Watch this. Watch this. In Romans 14, 17, it says, The kingdom of God is made up of three things. It says it's made up of righteousness, peace, peace joy. joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Not just joy, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Or if you got an NIV, it says Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Same thing. Yeah. But that's what comprises the kingdom of God. Right. Righteousness, being born again. Peace. I used to tell inmates when we do a lot of prison ministry, I said, peace is that when you can lay down at night and know that the guy next to you isn't going to shit you in the middle of the ribs. And if he does, you got to be with the Lord. Yeah. That's peace. Amen. Amen. That's peace. Yeah. Some of you have been there. You know what I'm talking about. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Everybody repeat after me. The kingdom of God is made of righteousness, peace, joy, righteousness, peace, joy. All right, don't anticipate me. <laughs> turn, turn, turn over to Ephesians 6, all right?
And so, Stanley, shut up. Stanley, shut up. I'm trying to sleep. Finally, he, he won't quit, so I get up to kill him. <laughs> and he's in my office. So I go in the office, and the UPS is on fire. I grab that thing, and I spun it out the window. And, uh, you know, did it stand? She said, I looked at him, and I said, dog, you got a place to stay. <laughs> I'm taking you to heaven with me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, some of you comment on we had somebody ask Renee the other day on Facebook, is Stanley stuffed? Yeah, you know, because all you ever see is pictures of Stanley sleeping here or sleeping there. <laughs> Stanley's life, when he gets up, it's to move from point A to point B to go back to sleep. You know? <laughs> Uh, I, you know, the, the dog's got a good life. He earned it. He deserves it. Amen. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I thought it was a great story. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you another story. You see this black guitar right here? Let's say I paid $1,000 for that guitar. And I fall into hard times, I fall into hard times, and there's no food, there's no, there's no milk on the table for my kids, there's no food to eat. So I take that guitar down, and I take it to the pawn shop, and I go, yo, Mr. Pawn Man, how much you give me for this axe? It's a Fender Stratocaster, Tex-Mex pickup, so I mean, this thing's trick. And he goes, well, let me look, let me look. And he looks at it. And he goes, well, oh, I'm going to go into the back room and look it up. I'll be right back. He ain't looking it up. He already knows how much he's going to jip me for. You know, he's going to hose me. I know. He knows it. He's just going to go check on the ponies that are running. That's all he's doing. He comes back. And he says, I'll tell you what I do. I can give you $100 for it. I go, $100? He goes, man, that's the best I can do. Take it or leave it. Man, you want to leave it. Wife lost her job. You ain't working. Things are rough. You take the money. You go buy some food. Now, let's say that I bought that black Fender Stratocaster right there for $100. And I fall into some hard times. Kids are hungry. Rent's due. What do you do? Take it to the pawn shop. You go, yo, Mr. Pawn Man, what do you give me for this tricked out Fender Stratocast? Tex-Mex pickups, all gold plated inside. He goes, hmm, I don't know. Let me go to the back room and check it out. Goes to the back room, checks out the ponies, because he already knows what he's going to give you. Comes back out and he goes, well, listen, the best I can do is give you $1,000 for it. What do you do? You take the money and run, fool! <laughs> you take the money and go buy some more hundred dollar guitars and sell it to this chump. <laughs> He's willing to give you a thousand bucks a piece of them. <laughs> it's all about value. Amen. Do you think God is a bad businessman? No. You think God's stupid? So you think God's pretty smart? Yes. Hello? Yes. yes. So God, in his infinite wisdom, to redeem mankind, he could have given the sun, the moon, all the stars, all the diamonds in South African diamond mines. He could have given all that to redeem mankind. But he didn't. You know what he did?
He could have given all those, but he didn't. He gave, he gave his most prized possession. He gave it Jesus. Scripture tells us that in John, it says, by him and through him, the worlds were made. That's, he's talking about Jesus. His most prized possession. Now, you indicated to me a minute ago that you didn't think God was a stupid businessman. You thought he was pretty smart, right? So are you saying that God overpaid for us? Are you, in, do, do we owe him change? Did the devil owe him change for the remission of our sin? No. You see, in God's eyes, he paid equal value. He gave his most prized possession to you. Because he values you. And he values you. And he's got great value on you and you. You guys in the corner back there, and you guys back there and over here, and even you, Nathan. My heart will be But you see, listen to me. God places great value on you. That's right. And you need to start thinking of yourself as valuable. Amen. Because God places value on you. We have to change the way we think. Well, not necessarily the way we think. We have to change what we think about. And uh, let's, let's uh, you know, I can turn you over to Proverbs 23, 7. This, this revolutionized my heart. I heard Mike Floyd talk about this. Oh and it, it says, well, I was at a business emporium and he was teaching it. And a great businessman. Yeah. He, he yeah. wrote some fantastic books. He's not a beautiful Lord, but if you can ever get a Mike Floyd business book, it'll change your life. And he said, and he was explaining, now, Mike was a very successful businessman. Oh, you, you Donald yeah. Floyd came, came here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, was, that's it. It's his will. Anyway, Mike, Mike was a great guy. Uh, I remember Renee and I ran into him at a gas station. They, they lived about a mile from us. And we, we were at this gas station, the corner gas station, and, and Mike was filling his, his car up with gas, and we pulled in with ours, and, and I got out, and Mike was standing there in his socks. <laughs> he was just standing there in his socks, filling up his car. Yeah, I just thought it was cool. He's, I'm thinking, this guy's worth a fortune. Yeah, this guy's got oh, He's got a jet bigger than this building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were going to play in California. And he thought, oh, I'll fly out there. No problem. <laughs> but um, but he, he said something that just really blew my mind. He showed us, he showed us over there in, in Proverbs 23, he says, and, and, and the, 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 uh, the, the synopsis is, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you're the scum of the earth, guess what? You're going to be the scum of the earth. Right. What's the difference between, I, I know everybody hates this guy, but I'm really, I'm not in any way endorsing him, all right? Okay, I'm not, but I've been watching Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's got moxie. That's right. yeah. I mean, the, the guy's no pushover. I've never seen him start a fight, but I've seen him finish a few. Yeah. And the guy's work. Billions? Yeah. yeah. He didn't get there because he thinks little of himself. You know the reason why people hate rich people? It's because he's jealous, because they think different than we do. These guys, like, like, like Trump, when he has an idea, he doesn't automatically go to why it can't work. He goes to, we can make this work by doing this. Takes it. You got to get out of this negative thought process in your life. I, I know. Well, that's how I was raised. You're not a kid anymore. That's right. It doesn't matter what church you went to when you were 12. It doesn't matter what your parents thought. Paul said, "When I was a child, I acted and I thought like a child. But now I'm a man." Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're men and women now. Is somebody going to control your thought process for you? Are you going to be somebody else's slave for the rest of your life? 
Change the way you think. Can you do it by washing of the water of the Lord? Man, start putting this book in your head. Look at here. The difference is the way we think. I had somebody recently, I had two events in one week. Somebody told me, you know, and there was a lady and, and uh, she was she was taking a shot at me. She goes, Well, I'm no perfect Christian. And I I was gonna, I was gonna jump on it, right? I was in my room, of course, my wife told me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be nice. But what do you mean you're not a perfect Christian? When you're born again, you become like him. Right. That's perfect. Oh, that just ticked some of you off, didn't it? I mean, I can't be perfect. Your spirit is perfect. It's yeah. born again. The nature of God is flowing through you like, right. like sap flows through a tree. Like air flows through this room. It's in you. Yeah. Tap into it. Why do you do that? You sh I'm going to show you how to do it. Here, here, here's, here's something you need to remember. I, I don't know if it's the same to say anymore, but I remember hearing this when I was a kid all the time. My father used to say it. Garbage in, yeah. garbage yeah. out. Yeah. You know, my house, we don't even watch TV anymore. Very rare. Uh, that doesn't mean we replace it with Netflix either. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you gotta watch The Walking Dead. You know? <laughs> Come on! Man. And, and, and some of those BBC shows, I think they're hilarious. <laughs> but garbage in, garbage out. Over in Philippians four eight, you guys know, but you're gonna say, everybody stand to your feet. Put, put up Philippians 4 8. Can you put it up in King James? Do that. Do that for me. For me. Put all your junk down. This is going to be an exercise. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do calisthenics. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are good, whatsoever, uh, if it be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Everybody say true. True. Everybody say honest. Honest. Just. Just. Pure. Pure. Uh, this isn't going to work. This, this is pathetic. Take your right hand and make a fist. Now hold it up in the air. And say, true, true, honest, honest, just, just, pure, pure, lovely, lovely, good, good, virtue, virtue. Amen, amen. True, true, honest, honest, just, just, pure, pure, lovely, lovely, good, good, virtue, virtue.
You know, we got a bunch of uh, we got a bunch of phrases in the Bible that says, "Head not to tail, the top not the bottom." I can do all things. If God be for me, who can be against me? The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. All of these things aren't excuses for our, our defeat. They're formulas for our victory. And that's what they are. You don't have to live a defeated life anymore. That's right. Oh, God, I wonder what's going to go bad. Listen, it rains on the just and the unjust. Crap happens to everybody. Amen. It's not what happens, it's how you handle it. Amen. Man, I'm going to handle it with God. Last week,
be. Am I making any sense to anybody today? The white man's got it. <laughs> Stand your feet with me. Hallelujah. Righteousness. Righteousness. Peace.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all give a round of applause for Ernie Garcia. We'll bring him up for our encore right after we have some time for prayer. Get my altar team up here real quick. Listen, if you're in this house today and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, today is an opportunity for you to be born again. And those of you who are born again, believers, maybe you have had some wrong thinking. Maybe you've been thinking about yourself in all the wrong light, in all the wrong way. You heard my brother today as he brought forth the message that we need to get our thinking straight. We are the head and not the tail. We need to remember that we are full of righteousness, truth, and joy. The Holy Ghost is in us. And friends, the ultimate price was paid for you because you have the ultimate value. And if your thinking's been wrong, today I want you to get that correct. Everybody just stand up and we'll get some uh, uh, altar music going. Don, hook me up with something back there for some altar music. Uh, brother, would you join me at the altar to, to pray? Um, he's, Ernie's going to join me up here. Father, again, we, we just, we, we thank you. We thank you for this message. We thank you for this opportunity to get, to get ourselves straight, to get ourselves right with you. And Lord, I just ask that you would just take this this moment, I, I know that maybe we're running a little later than, than you think that we should, people here in the congregation, but I want to tell you, there's nothing more important than spending some time at this altar. So if the Lord is drawing you, I want you to come. Come now.